good afternoon, good evening, good morning, good night, good wherever you are around the world. Thank you for tuning in again to the Singularity Net September edition of the Pod Leaders Update. We really enjoyed all your comments from July. We enjoy your comments on YouTube. We enjoy all your comments following up on the Telegram channels, the Discord channels, on Twitter. So please keep the conversation going. Keep chatting with us. Anything you'd like us to cover, talk about, uh, we're here for you because you, our community, are the wind beneath our wings and we never forget it for a moment. So we haven't seen you since July, but we've been very busy. Yes, some people have taken some holidays. I think most of us have, have had a little break over the summer, but it's been a very intense summer. We haven't taken our foot off the gas at all in any way. And of course, the major highlight of the summer was the AGI 22 conference, which we're going to talk about first. After we've talked you through the amazing AGI 22 conference in Seattle, we're going to do our usual run through. Today, we're going to talk about our core technologies first. So we'll start off with an update on AGI, on OpenCog Hyperon, on AI DSL, on um, the progress we're making with developing new new AI agents for our Singularity Net marketplace and platform, which I know is something that is of great interest in the marketplace and in, in the community. And I'm really pleased with the progress we're making there. So we're going to talk about those, how we're doing, what our work on developing the platform, the port to Cardano is, is how that's all going. And then we're going to do a run around. Once we've covered our core strategic technologies, we're going to do a run around of our spin-offs which are those businesses in our strategically selected vertical markets, which will be leveraging our core technologies and seeding massive utilization of the AGIX token on the Singularity Net marketplace and platform. So lots of exciting updates. Welcome back. I hope you've all had a beautiful summer as well as, as, well as us. And let's kick off September pod leaders meeting for Singularity Net and our ecosystem. Major highlight was absolutely the AGI 22 conference. It was my second AGI conference. I felt enormously privileged, proud, honored, inspired to be surrounded by such incredible leading, world leading scientists at the very, very front of technology, of philosophy, of psychology, of ethics, um, but, but particularly, of course, uh, technology. We all had some, some great favorites over the four days. Ben did three keynotes, so, so that was a highlight to, to, uh, to see Ben doing three keynotes, two of which were completely new and exciting materials. And what I found some of the other speakers, big highlights, of course, Gary Marcus. Gary Marcus is always hilarious and so engaging. My favorite Gary Marcus quote, and then I'll pass on to others for your AGI 22. My favorite Gary Marcus quote was when he talked about how a self-driving car, I think it might have been a Tesla, I think it was a Tesla, had been trained on obstacle avoidance, but that is up there, its obstacle avoidance data didn't include jets. <laughs> and so its owner had called it a cross runway to come and pick it up. And because it didn't recognize a jet as an obstacle, it ran straight into the jet. And I think millions of dollars of damage ensued, which obviously I don't find funny. But it was a it was a, a really great reminder of how AI really depends on having the right training data and uh, how far we still have to go with narrow AI before we can get into contextualization of, of AGI. Yosha Bach was always a highlight, always controversial, always super interesting. And, and we had some uh, really fantastic discussions and, and thought provoking um interventions from Yasha as always and another major highlight was the importance of ethics I also took away the growing trend towards hybrid AI systems for AGI uh, the increasing opportunities for making neurosymbolic AI more and more intelligence 
and um, and and just what a rich research field AGI is with so many wonderful new researchers coming out with doctorates coming out with with um, with new and interesting approaches to AGI. It felt like a community on the brink of exponential advancement and and we talked many times over the four days about how uh, the time of AGI is is really approaching um in the well really approaching <laughs> right so that's that's my summary of the AGI conference Matt of course you're the science lead for the AGI society uh, who run the AGI conference singularity net of course just a sponsor and what were your key takeaways so, uh, and Janet, thank you very much for that wonderful introduction about the conference. So the key um, focus was on ethical machine creativity, especially during the general audience event. Uh, I think one of the most wonderful things uh, at the end was, of course, the Jam Galaxy event um, on Sunday evening. Uh, featuring the Desdemona uh, robot, but uh, also, uh, you know, you you highlighted a few of um, the key keynotes. Um, as a, having a math background myself, I really appreciated the brilliance of Nelson New in in, in his ability to explain the abstract theory of category theory and polynomial functors and how they apply to AGI in a very clear, um, non-abstract manner. Um, but I mean, the, the number, and then of course, Rachel St. Clair, the um, collaboration um, with, with our, our, our team, Ben, ben Gertzel, uh, on the, the creation of an AGI hardware chip yes. um, because we've got special needs compared to deep neural networks. And so um, to optimize systems via hardware. I mean, those are just, a, uh, though I'm just singling out a, a, yeah. a, a few points here. But of course, a, a, as always, some of the most interesting conversations primed by the actual events also happen off stage um, between individuals and that's just the nature of it but the workshops at which alexei uh, will be uh, i'm sure bringing in when he talks about um uh, hyperon the, the open cog workshop um the incredible advances that have happened since things were announced last year. Uh, and now Meta is actually reality. I'll follow Alexei and describe some of the future directions of that. Um, but also, uh, I, and I didn't have a, a chance to attend, unfortunately, I, I was also interested in in hearing the, the work that's happening from the NARS community in their workshop. And then the two uh, half-day workshops um, on uh, nat um, interpretable natural language processing, as well as the uh, uh, fintech AGI and fintech workshop, which I would have also wish I had had a chance to to attend. Um, but those there were there were those were. That was the one day of multi-track events and that's what one can do. So uh, that would be my impression. So, uh, but more, more, and I'll speak to this later, is springing off of this and moving into the future. What what were the, the thoughts that came out of that for not just now, but how to move forward? Uh, thank you. Yes, you're right. It was a heart. It was a heartbreaking choice. 
to choose between that fintech conference and and of course Chris Poulin's presentation on deep reinforcement learning and and the workshop that he ran uh, was also very very powerful and very inspiring. It was it was a very hard decision between that fintech conference and uh, Alexei and the OpenCog Hyperon workshop conference, the, the FinTech workshop uh, and the OpenCog Hyperon workshop. Uh, but we attended the OpenCog Hyperon workshop and you're, you're right, it was it was really um, it was really profound to see the guys doing it, actually showing meta in action, meta compiling, that this language has is, is becoming a reality so quickly. Alexei, what were your highlights from your brilliant work on meta and your uh, presentations at the conference? Ah, hi everyone. <laughs> uh, so if we are talking about uh, the conference, uh, yeah, it's uh, really great that uh, these are not uh, just uh, uh, random uh, uh, talks and papers, uh, but uh, there is a community and uh, uh, there are research projects and uh, products uh, which uh, gather uh, some groups of people and uh, that's why uh, workshops uh, are quite uh, interesting. Uh, and uh, I would like to mention also uh, one more paper. You mentioned uh, uh, mathematics uh, and uh, you mentioned uh, ethics, uh, uh, but uh, there was a paper on uh, uh, applying uh, uh, paraconsistent logic uh, to ethics. And <laughs> yeah, actually, it's uh, really good because uh, uh, when we are talking uh, in uh, some web terms, uh, we can uh, uh, turn uh, everything uh, one way or another, but when uh, we have uh, uh, some realistic uh, um, mathematical model uh, behind it, uh, uh, it's uh, kind of cool, uh, I think. Uh, maybe it's not uh, that uh, much applicable to humans uh, because they are much more complex, uh, uh, but uh, when you can uh, analyze uh, some problems on uh, this uh, uh, universal scale, it's uh, important, uh, I guess. Okay, so if uh, <clears throat> uh, we uh, are talking about uh, OpenCock Hyperon, then uh, yes, uh, the last uh, uh, months and a few weeks. Uh, well, uh, so, sorry, I'll, I'll just stop you. We'll just finish the conference first because there's a couple uh, of other okay. details about the conference. And yes, I love the paraconsistent logic. And I love, there was a lot of reference to animal intelligence, wasn't there? One of my favorite phrases was dognitive. Was it, what was it, dognitive um, or dognition as opposed to cognitive and uh, cognition science. Uh, so, so, so I enjoy the power of consistent logic talk as well. And the concept of consistent and continual self-transcendence um, as, as a path towards either enlightenment or AGI or both. Uh, Haley, you did a brilliant job on the marketing. The feedback from all of the attendees, both online and in the in the conference, was extremely positive. That we had taken a giant step forward in the professionalism of of all of the materials, and uh, largely you and, and the amazing marketing team to thank for that. Uh, your key takeaways from the conference? I think the conference was really amazing this year. Um, it was. Just spectacular to see how AGI as a subject is is growing as a topic as a, a theme. Um, this conference, obviously, the longest running conference, focused focused specifically on AGI, not just narrow AI. Since the first workshop in 2006 and the first conference in 2008, but it really got the sense of the the momentum that AGI is gaining. Popularly, we had the AGI in fintech, you know, so real applications coming. We had a lot of AGI in industry. Um, our sponsor, Future, our, our co-sponsor, Future AI, there as well as True AGI and Singularity Net, um, as well as uh, participants there as well that are they're taking AGI concepts and, and building real products around them. So um, the conference was amazing to bring in all the different types of um, uh, research you know, from robotics to software to hardware and, and integrating that all into one cohesive um, conference was just amazing. And then Singularity Net's opportunity to sponsor that, uh, sponsor the free live stream of that so that all of that um, information at the highest level 
of all these topics could be offered globally to anybody who's interested in, in bringing AGI forward into the world in a more decentralized, democratized way. So the entire team worked tirelessly all weekend through Europe, uh, Europe's night, the European night, um, to bring that to us. And I think they did a spectacular job highlighting everything going on, making sure that everything online and virtual was smooth and seamless and, and helping the online speakers and participants and the online viewers and participants just have a, a great experience. So i um, excited about how um, everything went and, and everything we learned to, to help that be even better for next year. And I can't wait. Well, I think I think you you, you make some. Uh, thank you. I can't wait to another great great highlight of AGI twenty two was our fabulous sponsorship from Charles Simon uh, and Future AI and his wife and his team that they brought with them. It, it, it's such a refreshing approach to AGI and positive support of the conference, positive support of the um, of the entire community. And some big takeaways for me from Charles, I have takeaways from everyone. I, we could spend this whole pod leader meeting uh, talking about the AGI conference, but he talked about the importance of embodied AGI in robotics for AGI to be able to learn from its environment, learn 3D models and actually then apply those. And he made some he made some powerful points about uh, whether or not we're all doomed from from robots and AGI. And he concluded we're not, uh, which was which was a happy conclusion to it, to his talk at the conference. So big big thanks and shout out to Charles from from uh, Future AI for your beautiful uh, and gracious sponsorship of the event. Thank you. Um, Sergey, any last closing thoughts? Sergey, you did some some great great moderation of Q&A with Grace. Uh, any last thoughts from you? You know, uh, the most interesting thing was uh, the behaviors of mosquitoes, uh, which were always trying to bite Grace. <laughs> maybe, I don't know, maybe Gary Marcus would say that mosquitoes cognitive system was just, wasn't trained on robots. <laughs> but, but I have some interesting uh, considerations about the nature of generalization in that context and the nature of cognition and the cognitive system <laughs> of nature of beings. That's, that's, of mine. that's so funny. I always thought mosquitoes worked on like uh, temperature and sweat and smell, but uh, they work on my sight. How, how, how hilarious. Um, and poor old, poor old Grace, I hope she didn't mind the mosquitoes trying to get their uh, their pound of blood from her. Alrighty, moving on from the AGI conference. Thanks everybody for, for those, uh, those reflections. Unless there's anyone else here who watched some of it and wanted to particularly call out any other highlights that we haven't discussed. Let's move on. Right, we're going to get into the meat of things and Alexei come back to you as you were about to uh, start off earlier on how we're doing progress with OpenCog, Hyperon, AGI and the meta language, please. Yeah, uh, so um, the last uh, months and a few weeks uh, were quite uh, busy and uh, we were finalizing uh, not to the uh, ultimate final point uh, but uh, nevertheless to some uh, usable state uh, type system uh, in meta and uh, uh, different uh, people from meta study group uh, uh, started uh, experimenting uh, uh, with uh, this language uh, and uh, their use cases are quite uh, tricky and uh, actually uh, what uh, they showed uh, uh, during uh, the uh, workshop on uh, scaling up uh, neural symbolic uh, cognitive architectures, uh, which was mostly about open uh, uh, in some sense beyond uh, our own imagination on uh, how a meta co could be used. And uh, we were surprised that uh, it's uh, working. It, uh, uh, it is starting to work uh, in uh, quite non-trivial uh, cases and uh, there are of course uh, many things uh, to do and uh, uh, we are both uh, filling uh, some uh, gaps uh, in the implementation, some uh, refactoring for 
uh, better customization and the modularization uh, and, and so on. And uh, uh, we have uh, started to perform stop, some steps uh, towards uh, uh, possible uh, uh, easy deployment and uh, extraction of uh, a standard library. Uh, so uh, right now it's uh, just uh, 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 experimental uh, uh, script uh, in uh, tests, uh, but uh, uh, we are working uh, towards uh, a simple deployment so more people uh, could use uh, it. And uh, uh, yeah, and uh, what is uh, maybe most important, uh, uh, we are starting uh, to consider uh, more advanced, more AGI ish. Uh, uh, problems and uh, use cases uh, uh, like uh, uh, modification of uh, the interpreter itself uh, uh, because uh, uh, we consider different options like uh, turning it uh, into sampling based uh, probabilistic programming uh, or uh, purely deterministic uh, uh, dependently typed uh, language with uh, uh, strict uh, type system or uh, maybe probabilistic uh, dependent types uh, from uh, Jonathan Varel or uh, maybe something else. Uh, say Adam is uh, working on uh, recursion schemes and it would be uh, good to support uh, the possibility to uh, change uh, something in uh, the core without uh, the necessity to re reassemble this core, but uh, with the possibility to just insert uh, your own module to uh, perform uh, things uh, you need. So the next steps uh, would be, of course, even more agile, uh, uh, like uh, uh, real neural symbolic integration. We uh, have not yet uh, uh, applied uh, meta in the same way as we did uh, with OpenCock uh, Classic, uh, because we used it uh, uh, for real uh, tasks uh, in uh, neural symbolic settings uh, uh, and so on and uh, so forth. So there is uh, a lot of work uh, uh, ahead, but uh, we have a good feeling uh, about uh, how it uh, progresses and uh, how uh, people uh, really like it, uh, hopefully. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, we are also starting to apply it uh, to the dialogue systems and uh, we will uh, briefly touch this uh, uh, during the update on uh, Safia DAO. Uh, we, uh, we, we kind of uh, a little bit postponed its application to the Minecraft uh, world. Uh, uh, because uh, th there are too many uh, other interesting uh, things uh, to do. Uh, because actually uh, what we started uh, doing two years ago for the Awakening Health uh, uh, project with uh, OpenCock Classic, uh, right now it's uh, possible uh, to re really do this uh, stuff using uh, uh, Meta and it's uh, quite uh, exciting. So uh, we, we will uh, uh, finally get uh, uh, those features which uh, we wanted uh, back then uh, okay but uh, in any case uh, uh, the work on uh, minecraft agents uh, is uh, still uh, going uh, and uh, we hope to get back uh, to it uh, with a full-fledged uh, uh, implementation in meta uh, maybe uh, matt can add on uh, the distributed atom space ports and pln and uh, so on Maybe. Thank you. Thank you. And just before we skip on to Matt, I'd just like to say in 26 years of uh, technology rollouts, I think that's the first time I've ever heard anyone say, I'm surprised it's working so well, so quickly in non-trivial ways, <laughs> like genuinely. Well, uh, yeah, I, I, maybe it uh, sounded uh, not too... Uh, Correctly, because uh, there are some uh, problems uh, we need uh, to solve uh, with uh, scalability uh, and so on. So I, I wouldn't say you can uh, use it uh, 
in uh, production uh, right now to solve uh, really difficult cases. Uh, but conceptually, conceptually, it uh, appears uh, re really fun. <laughs> Yeah. That's really great and it's great to see the enthusiasm of the broader AI development community for it as well and how our other AGI researchers are enjoying using it. Um, so so, so well done to you and the team, Alexei, on, on super progress there and, and of course Ben and Matt and, and everybody who's worked on the guiding principles for Meta and uh, the the design and mathematics and technology underlying it all. Um, in fact, we're going to have the beta beta product out this year, are we, for wider AI dev testing? Well, uh, it, it would be not uh, beta, but maybe alpha. Uh, alpha. But it uh, actually depends. It will be decided uh, this week uh, whether we will. Uh, uh, add uh, more advanced features for AGI R&D uh, or we will uh, move uh, uh, towards uh, a stable but uh, somewhat limited version. Okay, good. Well, we can give the, everybody that update in October as to where the decision went. And I also love the way Charles Simon adopted our new word AGI-ish as um as a as a kind of a progression between narrow AI, pure narrow AI and, and AGI. Um, also one of the, the core strong messages that coming across in the conference to me was Ben talked and a number of people talked about how in AI we've seen um, periods of rapid progress, of multi-year rapid progress for computer vision. We've seen it in neural networks, which you know are are, are now quite generally considered to to have have significant limitations and we've seen um years of a, a number of years of rapid progress on natural language processing and how it now feels like agi is the next wave in that trend um, so 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 very positive progress of course our core technology our core mission at singularity net is the development of agi for beneficial benevolent um singularity and also to develop the most powerful technologies ever invented and uh, and i'm just very very happy and uplifted that we're making such strong visible tangible progress matt over to you you're you're following on from alexei thank you so... alexei <laughs> So I'll begin. Um, so as AI Chief AI Officer, my, my role encompasses a broad spectrum uh, of, of ideas. I won't touch on probably 90% of what I do, um, just to concentrate on, on two topics. One is uh, following up on uh, uh, what Alexei just mentioned. Um, and I'll start with that. So, uh, yeah. So one of the things that I've been working with uh, is the Meta Study Group, um, and that is and and guiding, helping guide a team. Neil Geisweiler, who unfortunately was not in person, but did deliver um, uh, some uh, talk at the workshop uh, remotely. Um, so. The state of, uh, as Alexei gave a great idea of the state of um, of Meta, uh, what we've been working on is implementing a number of modules atop of Meta. The first one being uh, Nil and uh, uh, Hedra and some other members of our team working to port PLN based upon a lot of the work that Jonathan Worrell uh, did uh, and presented at the workshop as well uh, at, in Seattle, um, including his wonderful infinite um, infinite order probability distributions, uh, which I can already see uh, some ideas for moving forward um, in in Hyperon as well. Um, and again, what I was saying earlier is kind of uh, more of a forward looking. So uh, once we start implementing PLN and doing this in an independently typed way, all of Jonathan Morell's work, 
Um, this the, in October, I'll be meeting with Ben in person, and we're going to be discussing one of the next steps, which will be uh, introducing and, and 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 trying to figure out how to port the Economic Attention Network or ECAN also um, into Meta. Um, and so I just want to kind of it, PLN's just the beginning. Meta's still in the in, in the beginning. But the progress, the speed of progress, uh, you know, a lot of this was just uh, ideas a year ago. And, and now we're moving forward on this. Um, Andre Senna, uh, we gave a talk on the distribute, uh, gave a talk on the distributed atom space, which is another key component of Hyperon. Um, and, and, the, and the performance increase uh, using the two database system was uh, nothing short of phenomenal. Um, so um, just again, this forward looking trajectory. Uh, the other the other topic, I, uh, the, the couple of other topics I, I do wish to touch upon. Um, so has to do with how we're actually thinking of um, taking all of these ideas plus some other ideas that have been percolating uh, in Ben and, and, and mine and, and, and everybody else's background and porting these over to our true AGI project. Um, and so in particular, how to how to how to create a a software stack for true AGI for Hyperon to again, as, as Alexei was mentioned, sure, the long, long picture version um, of AGI, but how do we turn this into real world uses in the near term? And so bringing in a lot of ideas that I've been working on with with Ben and others, uh, such as mind geometry, uh, our Tononi Phi work um, uh, for which appears to be possibly related to consciousness, but in general, at least, is this a measure of how systems as a whole perform considerably better than just the, the sum of the individual parts. Um, the idea of theory of mind, how all of these form together and can be used near term for performance increases in, um, in near term product use, as well as guiding the future towards AGI. And, and the last topic I wanted to touch on today was our current phase two work uh, for our AI domain specific language and and where we stand with that. Um, so this is this is more down to earth than what we were currently finishing up on. Um, we as a reminder, the community catalyst, uh, the Cardano catalyst community, uh, provided funding for phase two uh, of our AI DSL project. We're coming to the end of that funding uh, session. Um, and we have mostly created most uh, of what we started out to, to complete in, in terms of creating um, three AI DSL um, machine learning services. Um, and so that's exciting. We're going to be working on, on the forward looking part. We're looking on the, the, um, the video and report to the catalyst community, um, as well as framing the discussions, uh, on how we wish to proceed immediately after we finish phase two, what are the steps we need on phase three in order to actually release a, 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 
a complete version or initial version of AI DSL onto the um, onto the platform uh, and by next year or in next year and hopefully early next year hopefully earlier is always better um yeah. and that's going to be our target uh, okay and so what i mean i i was like any research work i you know in the early days of the ai ds world work you know things weren't happening to schedule but a, a lot of that is doing kind of that deep dive re necessary deep dive research dive research um and once that requisite work is done then everything follows much more quickly in succession and that's exactly what happens and uh, i'm very pleased that we were able to get the the three services that we described um early on uh at least almost near completion if not com all completely completed completely completed completely <laughs> completed <laughs> Thank you so much, Matt. Amazing progress as well. And here, you know, I, I think I now have to like pinch me. I'm dreaming. Uh, that's another quote that I think I never heard in 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 the, in in all my years of technology, which is uh, the performance increase from using the two database approach was nothing short of phenomenal. So congratulations on that phenomenal performance increase. Uh, fantastic to see. And for for anybody watching, you know, AGI is our core mission. And I hope those of you who have been loyal to the project for, from the beginning started out with AGI in mind and with AGI as the target can really feel what we're feeling here at Singularity Net, what we felt uh, all through the AGI, four days of the AGI conference, which is uh, the dream is becoming a reality now. Uh, we have a real programming language. We're able to... to um, start envisaging real world applications for AGI. So uh, I hope you're all getting as excited as we are out there in the community watching this AGI update. And Matt, we don't have time. I'd love to just ask you what kind of, can you tell me in like 10 words, what sort of performance increase um, you mean? Do you mean like uh, uh, accuracy, recall, the, that, that kind it, of performance? It was a speed increase. Speed, speed. Yeah, okay, which is absolutely essential, obviously, for the uh, high volume of complex processing that we need to do for AGI. Um, okay, thank you. Thanks for that. Right, and that brings us, moves us nicely across to Sergey, who has been working away with his team on developing a pretty massive and pretty impressive suite of more narrow AI tools, both for John Galaxy, for uh, twin token for a number of projects across the ecosystem, but most importantly, well, it's all important, but very importantly for the Singularity Net marketplace. Uh, how is it all going, Sergey? Give us a little update and a, a taste of what's to come in quarter four, please. Goes well, really, really well, and uh, <clears throat> we even uh, add some components and some novel services, by the way because we just see all the possibilities. You know, uh, Applied AI usually seems to be much a much simpler uh, topic and a simpler area than AGI. And that's true, that's absolutely true. Uh, applied AI is easier uh, to do than uh, develop uh, ad adaptive uh, AGI tools and platforms just to, to give, uh, uh, to, to process reasoning and some uh, an in, impossible uh, generalization, impossible for black box and neural network systems. But Applied AI uh, creates an ecosystem uh, for uh, AGI cores, and it's really significant as well. And we just try uh, trying to invest our time and efforts to, to bring the platform on the next and the next level uh, to make all this uh, ecosystem of applications up to date. In fact, we are uh, you know, trying to pursue th three goals. First of all, uh, to get together all uh, the downstream task solving elements uh, for cognitive architectures and agents, to make to have everything, all the elements on the platform that needs uh, to be used in uh, cognition. 
So we could get all together complex uh, cognitive architectures, and when we, when and if and when we will have this uh, AGI-ish course um, nucleus, how Gary Marco says, and all these uh, components as an ecosystem uh, will have all the elements to build uh, systems of different classes and different different goals. So that's uh, the first thing. We need to have all these elements in and try to miss nothing. The second goal was to provide community with the strong multilingual solutions, uh, just with, with some kind of better controllability. Sometimes that, that brings the additional value when we have uh, strong multilingual solutions. For example, we need translating systems, translating systems for many languages, and to have uh, really high quality for high resource language pairs and have acceptable quality for low resource language pairs. And that, and in fact, we need uh, as more languages as we, as we can imagine, just to make uh, all the solutions easily trans trans transparable and to be, um, to make them uh, easy to adapt for many markets. Uh, and the third goal was to deploy uh, um, uh, novel, some, some kind of novel abrupt tools based on cutting edge technology, uh, which was impossible, uh, let's say, uh, to be done uh, several months ago, but now it's become possible because applied, applied AI is evolving, the tools evolving, the model is evolving. So we have many, many services, and I will uh, just mention some of them. To, to, to give a broader picture just of, of what we're doing. <laughs> One of the challenge, most challenging uh, multi-services was uh, neural machine translation because it's not so easy to develop such, such a tool for hundreds of languages being not a big tech company. In fact, we need a lot, a lot of data we need to we need to combine many solutions in one system, and uh, even even debugging uh, took uh, almost two months. But we have this uh, this service ready, and it gives really high quality for many many languages, and it will be available for uh, for the platform users. I think it's significant. Uh, another uh, another. Uh, a uh, good example for multilingual solutions is multilingual speech recognition. It seems to be super easy just to, uh, um, just to make a recognition of spoken language, giving a label, for example, is it English or Chinese or something else, and afterwards just make a recognition. But in fact, we're, we're, using, we're always using uh, Google systems on, on our robots. And if, if it's not reliable, it, or it covers too many languages and it's too universal instead of being more focused. It gives a mistake which breaks uh, all the process uh, from, from the beginning. So it's a very, uh, very significant class of systems. We just try to make it 99% of accuracy and provide the solutions to make a spe uh, speech recognition work really well on the platform. That's uh, just two examples of multilingual services. Uh, Examples of just downstream tax solvers, many, 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 many of them. Uh, some things like uh, you know, name density recognition, question answering, paraphrase generation, uh, speech synthesis, speech recognition, uh, not la language dependent. I mean, uh, and speech commands, uh, mm, uh, printed text recognition, and so on. Many of them, uh, but. Uh, we have a class of uh, specific systems which brings just a new experience, experience, uh, new user experience. One one of this is uh, singing voice uh, synthesis. It's very very interesting, and the music synthesis, and you know some hype, other hype stuff like, uh, for example, uh, text to image tasks, which is you know uh, with um, last in last two months it's very very popular and everyone trying to explore it uh, because the Mijoni uh, model was uh, presented in another AI community. So <clears throat> one of the most interesting thing I would say is uh, singing, singing voice synthesis. It was really almost impossible uh, several months ago to do uh, with high quality but now it is possible and we're trying to uh, to make it uh, just in the first in the first place and to, sh to show to demonstrate it on a robot maybe it will bring some new novel experience for uh, not only for platform users but for users of our beautiful spin-off gem galaxy um, 
that, that is really interesting. And um, I guess many customers could come to the platform to get such results, such interesting results that could be um, applied in their creativity. Uh, musicians, uh, artists, and maybe journalists and writers. The third thing, uh, we have not only thinking voice and music generation and image generation as well. Uh, I will say about image generation, just two words. Uh, we wrap uh, the, all the best checkpoints. We don't have our own models right now because they just super com compute consuming. Maybe we'll come to that soon within several, several months. But right now we are just uh, uh, providing uh, our users with the, all the best checkpoints available. Uh, which have been open source. Now they are available to easily, easily try them. These are massive systems and it's not, easy to, not so easy to deploy them. It, it's challenging for even high level developers. So we are just providing the community with all this stuff to make uh, people, to let the people experiment with all this. And the most interesting thing is text generation. <laughs> we use it uh, inside, uh, inside the community all the time. Uh, as uh, some specific tools to, to, uh, to give uh, ideas and inspiration for uh, podcasts uh, and some um, just some textual content for, for any, any type of use. And uh, in this uh, area, we release a uh, uh, song lyrics generation system which was trained on all the song lyrics, which, which, which could be found. We was the gathering of this data set for half a year, just to include everything and to give some general, uh, general labels uh, to make it controllable. Uh, and we trained uh, a generative system on this corpus. I guess it will be a very interesting service for many uh, creative persons. And also we have uh, philosophic text generation. The same idea, but uh, we just got together all the philosophic texts which we have in, in the world and we train the model on this. So this, uh, these are just several examples. I guess we'll have almost all the pack of services uh, deployed, tested and available uh, in October. We'll have a half Amazing. in December and another half in early October, I suppose. All right. And you've published a few in the last week or two, I think maybe three yes, new models. Yes. Yes, we have uh, seven services available and uh, 12 services fully deployed, but just uh, not fully wrapped in, in platform UI. So it, it usually takes several days to, to wrap them. So, so a major uplift of service availability yes. on the platform. And I tell you, community, wait till you get your hands on that lyric generation and that voice generation. Um, tools it's it's super fun super inspiring and um creates the, the most beautiful output so so lots going on on the platform i'm going to take us from there thank you so much sergey i'm going to take us from there to anand who's leading our cloud technology platform engineering team hi anand Hello. lovely to see you as uh, always likewise likewise Right. Um, I mean, I'm, I, I always get excited when Sagi speaks because, uh, you know, his team is using the publisher portal, you know, to deploy all these services. And it feels really happy when, you know, someone uses these tools, uh, you know, to publish their services onto the blockchain. So very, very happy and very, very excited to see. Uh, I do want to talk about training, which has been, uh, you know, a big piece uh, that the AI developers have been looking for since quite some time onto the platform. Uh, you will see uh, some major updates happening on the marketplace dev as well as on some of the SDKs you know, towards uh, the end of Q3, which is just a few weeks away. Uh, and you know, as and when we have more services that support training, uh, you will start seeing uh, services uh, and you know start also you know, be in a position to train these services through the marketplace tab, right? So that's that's pretty exciting. It's been there since quite some time and we finally are making good progress. Uh, the other piece that we wanted to discuss and we have been working very closely is on staking on the Cardano side. Uh, so a uh, lot's going on there. We're all familiar with, uh, you know, some of the challenges uh, that we, the uh, test net on the Cardano, but nevertheless, it's still a very exciting space. Uh, and, you know, we're looking forward to onboarding, staking onto the Cardano blockchain. Uh, we are also working on uh, Hydra, you know, which is onboarding the entire Cardano 
onto the platform right and in mean, that's 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 a very very big piece it's a very ambitious goal uh, we're also very excited to you know start our integrations and you know ground works and taking those baby steps uh, you know in terms of integrating and understanding the nuances of how hardware will fit in so those discussions are started and you will uh, you know start seeing more than more as we progress through uh, you know these pieces out here so that's been the key primary updates not last but not the least i do want to make a small call out that yes uh, we uh, more or less are ready with the loyalty drop you know for uh, to go live uh, but uh, you know they uh, will just wait for the announcements and you know, hope to see that happening soon also as well so yeah Thank you. So the the tech side of the loyalty airdrop has been has been mm-hmm. developed. Thank you very much. And we're still putting some finishing touches to the scheme to make sure that it reflects what our community and what what our uh, broader community and future needs. So thank you so much, Anand. Uh, great right. to have you with us, and and uh, so much progress. And and I get excited too whenever Sergey talks about about <laughs> services on the platform because oh, yes, it, it's. Yes. Yeah, yeah. A, a, they're doing such an amazing job. And B, the services are so interesting, so fun, and and C, um, it really underpins that focus that we absolutely have in the foundation on building traction, building adoption on the marketplace. And at some point, and maybe Peter, when we come to the community, we'll be asking the community, you know, as we build it and roll out these amazing services on the platform, how can you come and get involved? How can you use those services and how can you share them and amplify them out in the marketplace to make sure that uh, consumers are fine? So next up, I will move to, thank you, Anand, finally finishing off our core technologies update, Shridhar on the blockchain side. And then I'm coming to you, Marcello, you can start getting your, your camera ready. Uh, hi, hi, Shridhar, lovely to see you. Hi, Janet. So hi, thanks hi. for inviting me, inviting me to provide a quick update on the blockchain side. Uh, as Anand mentioned, so one of the key priority for us is moving certain section of our features from Ethereum to Cardano. So Anand has provided a quick update on how we are moving our staking and then validating that with various wallet integrations, which can be used across multiple apps, including the loyalty reward on even taking those integrations into our ERC20 converter. So that's an ongoing activity. We are continuing working on that. And uh, the next one is we spent a lot of uh, time on uh, <clears throat> on Riju project. So we are in the final stage of finishing the contracts. So most of the contract has been ready, except the, the final one, which we are calling as uh, NFT challenge uh, contract. And we are looking at existing staking contracts, which we are using for many years, both for AGX staking and as well as in other uh, projects. So we're looking at those contracts and then see how we can leverage it. And also looking at some of the the, the cloning strategies defined by the uh, open zeppelin and see how, how we can leverage and uh, quickly design and then come up with the with those contracts so that we can complete uh, the, the contracts related to a review project so hopefully the design is pretty much reviewed and we are in the initial stages of uh, completing those or building those contracts so that's on the review side and from the jam galaxy side we want to from day one we want to look at on the multi-chain aspects not just only on the the Cardano, we want to look at other alternative options uh, to provide as a multi-chain capabilities onto the overall platform. So that's where we looked at uh, various other platforms, including Solana. And what we have done is we have uh, created the NFTs uh, onto that platform and uh, quickly demonstrated how, how it meets some of our needs. And also looking at now how we can do those NFT trades, leveraging the existing contracts which is available on the platform, right? Not in order to build from the scratch again. So that's what uh, is a primary focus. And as I said, we have achieved on uh, demonstrating the examples with respect to creating NFTs. Now we are in the phase of uh, demonstrating on how we can use it from the from the NFT trading perspective within the marketplace. So that's uh, that's an ongoing activity. Um, so we should have uh, the demo also with the team so that we can have a, or we can make a better calls on the priorities on how we can, or which blockchain we need to quickly pick it up and then uh, build the platform on top of it. So that's uh, the next activity. Uh, from a couple of weeks, I've been working with uh, Mindplex team uh, and bundling the, all the contracts together and get those contracts audited. So we don't release any any contracts without any audits. So we work with uh, some of our uh, security partners to audit our contracts. So we are in the preparation of 
uh, releasing our contracts for uh, for an audit so that we can have uh, uh, the reports and then any kind of findings from them to fix it before release those contracts so that's pretty much uh, it's going on right now right so these are the key highlights which are which are happening uh, and which we are going to work in the next couple of uh, weeks as well Amazing. Thank you so much. Huge amount of progress, huge amount of tangible delivery uh, being delivered right across the board, across all of the ecosystem. Uh, so thank you very much, Sridhar, to you and your team. I'm very excited about the NFTs and being able to start trading them soon. So um, great, great work there. Thank you. Right. We are now going to move on to the spin-offs, having focused heavily in this in this pod leaders meeting on our core technologies and the AGI conference. We're going to have short, snappy spin-off uh, updates. We're going to start with you, Marcello. Of course, everyone loves to hear about Singularity DAO, so we might give you an extra minute or two. And then we're coming across to you, uh, Michael, and we'll we'll run through the rest of our spin-offs relatively rapidly. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Marcello from, from Singularity DAO here. I know um, I haven't spoken much to the community recently because we've been uh, nose to the grindstone, uh, working really hard to deliver the uh, V2 of the Singularity DAO platform, which has unfortunately um, been uh, a plague with, with with some delays, mostly due uh, due to the uh, um, to the extra security measure that we've been taking, working very closely with our security uh, cybersecurity uh, partner, um, auditing every single smart contract that we're releasing, every single aspect of the platform, including potential um, different attacks from um, from 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 bots. Um, and uh, and we are now very happy with the results. So we are finally at the last phase of auditing and testing. So the Singularity DAO V2 platform has been uh, tested by a group of community um, community members that we call beta testers, uh, and it's been in test for about a couple of weeks. So the uh, the platform features a major um, UI and UX um uh, rehaul so completely new uh, user experience new branding new logo new colors overall new experience and uh, and hopefully a better experience so far the um the feedback from the beta testing group have been have been overwhelmingly positive uh people find it uh mind blowing much easier to use and uh, and and better in in terms of uh, usability, in terms of simplicity, and in terms of of navigation. So the aesthetics uh, the aesthetics improvement are just one aspect of the Singularity DAO V2 platform. Uh, we are also releasing the uh, the the um, uh, Dyna Lab section, which includes the Dyna. Uh, DYDX Dynaset. So um, if you're familiar with how Dynaset works, um, so far we've only been able to go long in the market. So our our trading desk supported by uh, our team of quant analysts um, have been able to buy and sell from the market based on the strategies contained in each Dynaset. So we have uh, we're going to release two strategies, one for Ethereum and one for Bitcoin. However, the uh, D, uh, Dyna DYDX um, is going to give the ability to our traders to um, uh, to go uh, to short the market and to apply leverage. So this will hopefully give a new set of tools to our traders in order to make profits for, for, for our users. Um, this is a major improvement, although it comes with um, uh, with some uh, slight changes compared to previous dynasets. As you know, we're all about decentralization. Not your key, not your cryptos has been our mantra um, uh, consistently. Um, DY, uh, Dyna DYDX is going to be a little bit different. Um, so it, it comes with a slightly higher risk, uh, but users will be fully informed uh, during the whole process. The um, the good updates is that 
if we receive the final green light from our cybersecurity firm, uh, for which we've been working very hard for the uh, for the couple for the last couple of months, um, we should be able to launch the new platform by the end of the month um, and finally start in the new trading window, which will last two weeks. So from the moment uh, in which we are releasing the new platform, our users in the community will have two weeks to choose the strategy uh, of the, the Dynaset to deposit their, their crypto on. Um, so this is going to be another major milestone achieved by Singularity DAO and something that we are extremely proud of. In the past few months, we've also been working hard on, on a new governance proposal uh, that has been voted 90% yes by, by the community. So another great victory for, for, for our ecosystem. And uh, other than that, the team has been, has been growing. Uh, we went through some internal organization to focus more on productization of our, uh, of our uh, AI tools, which include some cutting edge machine learning um, algorithms that will be released uh, throughout all the year, uh, both for retail and enterprise adoption. So majorly, the major milestones that I, I would like to update our users, this group and the community on is the release of the new platform, the release of Dynamic YDX, the, uh, the progressive decentralization pro, uh, uh, process that will bring us to become a full DAO and also the progressive decentralization of our protocol. So this is extremely important because in the moment that Singularity DAO will become a, stand, a standardized DeFi protocol, it will become totally permissionless to, for any other project in DeFi to integrate with us. And, uh, uh, and, and this can bring exponential value to, to, to our DAO and, and to our project. So just to name one, um, up until the previous version of Singularity DAO, when users were using Dynaset, they, will, they, they would have got an LP token as a representation of the ownership of that Dynaset, but they couldn't do anything with that LP token. From now on, users will own that LP token. They can that once we are decentralized, they will be able to use it across the DeFi ecosystem. So, for example, while before we had trading windows in which our users were, were, were having their funds locked into Dynasets, right now they can use Dynasets, deposit their funds during the deposit window, and then they can withdraw them anytime during the whole period of the trading window should something happen or should they need to use their funds for 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 other for other reasons so these are incredible um milestone that we've been working very hard with with our team of 40 plus team members and uh and i'm extremely excited that we are finally coming very close to the release of the singularity v2 and uh and i hope everybody will like it and and enjoy it Amazing. Thank you so much. And I, I, I think I speak for all of us here that we're all very excited about V2. And when you say you're extremely proud of what you've achieved at Singularity DAO, it's, it's you know, you speak for all of us here at Singularity Net. Um, we, we are incredibly proud of what you and the team have been achieving, the performance of the, of the Dynaset, the performance of the platform overall. And thanks so much for coming along today and giving us an update. Fantastic to see you as always. Thank you, Marcello. Right, so now we really are going to have to speed up. So we're, we're, we're going to start a clock here. Uh, Jan, I'm going to put you, you're going to go on the clock and you're going to give everyone a 30 second warning, right? Two minutes for everybody and a 30 second warning when you're 90 seconds in, please. Uh, Michael, thank you. You've been waiting patiently. Uh, what exciting things are going on in the world of Twin Token and uh, everything else you're involved in? Good. Thank you, Janet. Um, wonderful to be here. Hello, everyone. So I, I'm going to wear two hats today. I'll, I'll first update you on um, Singularity Studio, where I am the COO. So a lot of exciting things going on there. I'll keep this short, but we are rebranding, first of all, to be Singularity Amplified to better reflect the mission that we're going to be accomplishing in the future. And that is about collaboration, helping companies to thrive, helping the expansion of AI. There's two key pillars that we've been focusing on recently that are supporting that. One is around building an ecosystem. So we have the spin-offs, we have many partners that are coming in, we have other emerging tech companies and AI and blockchain service providers and customers. We're trying to build a thriving ecosystem to help them 
collaborate, share, communicate, learn, and teach each other. Secondly to that, and, and very related, is a initiative we're working on closely with the SNET team um, that we call the Centra Staff, which is decentralized human capital. So how do we draw upon the skill sets available in the SNET community and other places to start matching that with the growing needs of the spin-offs, with the ecosystem partners we have and customers for gig employment support, for projects, for full-time employment, and creating that, as we said, in a decentralized model, um, leveraging both blockchain and AI to simplify that. I'm going to switch to my other hat now, which is as a uh, co-founder of Twin Protocol. So creating digital twins using AI to help cognify a person's knowledge. So we've been making a lot of exciting projects there, or progress there. Um, we've been working with the, uh, the SNET team on creating POC or proof of concept uh, versions of this. We've been using those with partners and customers and investors. If you go to our LinkedIn page, Twin Protocol, you can see a number of the videos there. Um, I think you'll enjoy those. So we've been doing a lot of investor outreach. If we want to scale this rapidly, then we're going to need some capital infusions there. So we've been running symposiums and, and lots of conversations. Um, we're tangentially targeting a Q4 TGE that's um, subject to a few other considerations, but we're excited to have that occurring. And um, we're also looking at a potential commercial product release sometime during the first half of 2023, if not during Q1, if we can keep moving at the pace that we're doing. So thank you, Janet, for this opportunity to update the community. Thank you so much. And just one question for me, please. If our uh, twin protocol technology, which I know Sergey's had, had it developed for us, if it can help humans cognify their knowledge, can it help dogs dognify their knowledge? Sounds like a Netflix special, um, but uh, I don't think we're there yet. I don't think. <laughs> Sergei, I don't think it's good, but I don't think we're ready for that yet. Not quite. Well, well, if you went for even my dogs, they haven't got much knowledge. So um, they're probably not, not a huge amount of challenge there for Sergey and his assistants. Uh, thank you so much, Michael. Brilliant update, lots of progress and, and Twin Protocol, one of our really exciting projects. Uh, big hit with, with uh, various corporates because of course it has enormous corporate applicability as well as applicability with our Metaverse partners Mandala, who were developing uh, Guru non-player characters for us. So a lot of application for our twin technologies. Um, thank you so much. And moving from you to Eddie, because I just see you as a natural flow together from all our work together on Awakening Health. Eddie Munro, wonderful to have you with us today. How is it all going on Awakening Health? Thanks, Janet. Great to be here. Yeah, um, we have gotten started with a couple pilot studies uh, pilot study programs with Grace. So she's out there in the fields um, beginning to interact with uh, patients and residents. Uh, we're, we partnered with two university research labs, a couple of hospitals, and uh, a senior living center. One of the programs is at McGill University in Montreal. McGill's uh, a well-regarded university. We're working with a research lab there that uh, focuses on medical technology with seniors. Uh, in particular, technology-assisted behavioral interventions with a human touch is what they say. They might need to change that to with a humanoid touch, uh, but they're starting pilot studies at a hospital there in Montreal and with a uh, residence at a senior living center, seeing how interactions with Grace can help seniors with their well-being, uh, medically, physically, psychologically, and emotionally, and with loneliness, which we know is a huge problem in the senior population. The uh, other pilot program is a research collaboration with Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, HKUST, which is a world leading university in science and tech. And we're working with two great, uh, well known AI researchers there, Bert Shi and Pascal Fang. Fung, Pascal Fung, sorry, Pascal. And uh, they're working with the Haven of Hope Hospital in Hong Kong doing research and development with Grace, working with patients within a hospital setting. So helping them learn to, uh, helping her learn to navigate to patients' rooms autonomous, autonomously and taking vitals and things like that. 
We're also uh, raising capital to expand what we're doing and to support the process of growing the work we're doing now into products in the marketplace. So if you're interested in joining us as an investor, please feel free to reach out and contact me. So uh, who we're at too, perfect. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Eddie. Thanks for that great update. And it's brilliant to be taking uh, all of the excellent work that we've done on Grace and her technologies and working with highly esteemed medical science and technology organizations to, uh, to help further refine the applicability to use cases and make sure that it is really delivering the benefit and the value that uh, we see for it. Um, so fond of Grace, uh, more Grace is appearing around the planet as well, uh, which is which is always a super pleasure. Uh, so next, thank you so much indeed, Eddie. We'll move on to Jasmine. I know Jasmine has a lot to tell us about Reju. Jasmine, you're going to talk fast and get all your killer points in because I know you've got loads. All right. Yep. Uh, as always, much happening at Rejuve. Um, so we've been working on, on onboarding all of the feedback from the testers and uh, fixing all the bugs that uh, reported, but also continuing uh, on with our development, which creates more bugs. So we uh, are continuing to work on that. We should have a new update to the beta testers out uh, within a week or two with the uh, Garmin and Aura integration. And we also did a reorg of the task area to uh, make it nicer and uh, prettier and uh, more logical. And we are also, we have decided to onboard uh, Google Fit um, into there. So that's like an Android analog of HealthKit so that more uh, wearable devices can get onboarded without kind of uh, integrating with them one by one. So if you have other type of devices like uh, Samsung or uh, AmazeFit, you can uh, link those as well. So that'll be on, a, on the next uh, agenda. It won't be in this update, but on the next one. Um, so we also announced recently the uh, Genesian partnership with Singularity Net, in case you missed that. So that has uh, huge implications for Rejuve ecosystem because we have uh, real uh, live uh, long-lived flies to be able to do uh, genetic uh, research with. And that will become uh, super important once we begin to onboard genetic data uh, via our application uh, in the future. So because uh, we'll have uh, kind of partners to be able to uh, get those tests and uh, get those results. And uh, speaking of uh, partnerships, um, we have uh, a lot going on on that front as well. So we have uh, eight confirmed uh, vendors for the reward store. We can't really uh, announce the names just yet, but uh, pretty soon we're working on all of those negotiations. So we do uh, indeed have that. And we'll also in turn be working on um, building out the store component of the app. Um, and also uh, you probably heard about the uh, Hedge uh, KYC partnership with Singularity Net. So uh, Rejuve will also be utilizing them as well for um, our KYC in the app. Um, we're also seeking options for uh, Cardano wallet integration because uh, right now uh, there's currently no uh, MetaMask or Wallet Connect analog on the Cardano side. So uh, we've kind of been reaching out to different wallets. So if anyone has uh, suggestions on how to make that work, because we definitely want um, Cardano users to be able to redeem uh, their tokens in the Rejuve app when, uh, when it's that time. Um, we'll also be expanding our survey question and data point list. So we'll be getting more uh, biomarkers and factors, which will also in turn expand the BaseNet. Uh, and another important point is that in order to make the research program uh, legal, ethical, we'll be uh, kind of preparing for an IRB, which is um, an in, uh, independent review board or uh, institutional review board. And, and that's kind of a review that's done to make sure that any uh, research involving human subjects is ethical. Uh, so yeah, basically we have uh, a lot uh, planned and coming up. So uh, bear with us, but we are continuing our productivity. We're not uh, slowing down at all. So we will definitely have lots of uh, updates and new cool things for everyone. Uh, to see you. you're you're expanding in all areas uh jasmine fantastic progress since uh since the community last saw you in july a couple of points i just wanted to to pull out there that i'm particularly excited about obviously uh, excellent excellent progress on the partnerships on the expansion of the app functionality and uh, and the wearables and the integration brilliant news but especially i'm particularly fond of the genetian partnership and the long live flies. And I want to give a shout out to Kennedy Schall. Uh, Kennedy is our evolutionary biologist who 
has bred these flies over a period of 12 years. We have three different fly population. We have a control population. We have long lived flies. We have super long lived flies. And we're doing world leading artificial intelligence and transfer learning um, with a plan to do transfer learning on the findings from the flies into findings for humans to develop longevity, uh, longevity solutions. Obviously, that takes some time, but uh, you heard it here first. We have got our first results from the data from the flies coming in, still being validated, looking at those all. But actually, we're expecting to have a press release out in the next uh, two to four weeks to say that we, we have got some exciting and some novel results coming from our AI analysis of the long-lived uh, Genetian flies. And it was amazing to have Kennedy with us at the AGI conference looking at how we blend our um, preeminence in artificial general intelligence with evolutionary biology, with genomics, with uh, with with longevity to to you know re solve for some of the 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 huge suffering diseases uh, that that humanity faces like Parkinson's or Alzheimer's or central nervous diseases or whatever they may be the genetic mission has has always been to make humanity safer and more comfortable uh, more healthy and I'm hugely proud to have this opportunity for Singularity Net to work with Genetion. It's a partnership Ben's been been working with for, um, I think, well over a decade as well, and and uh, we're super proud and super honoured to have this opportunity to to benefit humanity together. Uh, so fantastic! Uh, thank you so much, Jasmine. Now we're really going to have to sp uh, uh, speed up. Connor, everyone wants to know when's the new website coming out? It's looking amazing, I have to tell you. Tell us about it. Yes, it is. Um, maybe it'll have launched by the time people are watching this video. Um, it's looking amazing in um, our internal uh, test sandbox that Janet is talking about. So, um, yeah, how ready is the website? The website is ready. Um, Mindplex magazine will be launching as a um, online magazine about robotics and AI and space and genes and longevity and all that singularitarian stuff. Um, so yeah, we've had the website built now, uh, did some bug finding, bug shooting uh, about two weeks ago. And then as Sridhar mentioned earlier in the call, we had to um, run the blockchain parts of it through audit. We're not going to release anything without proper auditing and quality control. So I think Sridhar's team is is almost finished on that. We also have a, a full-time tester on it, Ragu, who is um, testing it, how it looks on different devices, different operating systems. Um, so yeah, we will be launching very soon is the answer to your question. And uh, it's, it's bad luck to put a specific date on it exactly don't jinx it uh well we're all behind you we're we're, we're uh, really excited by uh, the overall mindflex proposition and how we're going to decentralize media but some some fantastic content coming up and i i know the community are going to love it when they get their hands on it thank you connor i will move on swiftly unless there is any other uh key points you wanted to raise connor uh, these tons I could say about Mindplex. Um, we were we were going to launch the magazine first and then the podcast. It looks now because of the delays I just mentioned, we'll be launching with the podcast. So that's exciting. Our very own Dr. Ben Gertzel will be uh, interviewing thinkers about um, everything from indigenous wisdom to artificial intelligence to politics and the future of humanity anybody we think is interesting uh so that that podcast will be part of the magazine when we launch and yeah i do want to speak to the point janet just made about decentralizing media so the mindplex um uh, has two faces it's a, it's a magazine about the future on the one hand and then that magazine and that content is a test a pilot uh for uh, media environment. So we will launch our own content to begin with on, on Mindplex software and then open it up to the big wide world to launch uh, whatever is on your mind. Uh, 
to using our software, which will have AI tools um, like uh, interactive uh, agents and uh, and uh, yeah, translation, text to audio. Um, we're uh, just finalizing the roadmap of what AI tools will be launching out. So it will start as the magazine and uh, then the, the decentralized media will come up later. All right, brilliant. Thank you. And I can't uh, let, let this opportunity go by without saying one of the highlights of the summer for me was absolutely meeting you at the Dublin Tech Summit. Um, Connor, we had a fantastic couple of days. We met a lot of really great people, great technologists, and uh, it was it was it was a, a real highlight of the conference season for us all at Dublin Tech Summit. Talking about AI, I had the, a panel discussion on on AI with an incredible, highly esteemed uh, set, set of panelists. So lovely to have met you in person, and brilliant progress on Mindplex. Uh, keep up the good work and. Uh, we look forward to that magazine coming out. Thank you. Thank you. Right, while we're on highlights of the summer, oh my God, Dan Galaxy is just going from strength to strength. We have Danny Newcomb with us today. Danny is like a giant musician who's played on stages like Madison Square Gardens. He's, he rubs shoulders with the, the absolutely uh, greatest of the greats on the planet today. Beautiful, <laughs> VP of our, of our artist uh, relations. Danny, tell us about Jam Galaxy in two to three minutes, if you can. Two to three minutes? I thought this was a half an hour. <laughs> Maybe uh, three to four. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for uh, introducing me, Janet. Um, as Janet knows, there were there was a, <clears throat> a very interesting and beautiful show at uh, AGI 22. Uh, Janet and Andres and uh, Chris Kudla were in charge of the robot as she assumed new responsibilities. Now uh, singing, thank you to, I believe to Sergey and to Ben who uh, made it happen. Ben Gertzel. So we had a we had a great showcase at AGI 22, um, and it was the first time that the Jam Galaxy band has performed with uh, artists that were that we've been listed to be on the platform, uh, early artist partners. So it was a real uh, sort of I don't, I don't, breaching isn't the right word, but broaching of the community is probably the better word. Um, so it was really kind of a coming out and and enjoying music, but also once again working with the AI technology and showing. Um, local artists, what we can do with AI technology was a big part of it. Um, and they loved it. I was, uh, I guess I froze. I guess I froze. I'm back. Um, but the artists loved it. I was a little worried at first that they were going to be a little, artists tend to like organic things, but they really responded well to the, um, the AI and the robot. So as we move forward, um, we got a whole bunch on our plate with, uh, getting NFTs, up and ready for our launch, our series launch, which is going to be the beginning of Rare Bloom, which will be the 14th of next month. So we have in that series, we're going to include uh, three NFTs from Desi, um, one with Desi and Sophia, and then a single from the Jam Galaxy Band, which was uh, going to feature um, a track we did from uh, oh, it was the Revolution will not be televised, but it's uh, like a wasp, which is our version. So. The revolution will not be centralized, right? Isn't that right, Janet? <laughs> Certainly the singularity won't. Right. <laughs> or the revolution. That well, I think the singularity, singularity is the revolution, right? That's what I thought. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and as we move forward, uh, we we have Tony Mann now working um, with us as CTO, and he's busy working on our artist portal, which is, for me, is the biggest step forward because it means that artists will be able to uh, put their content and music up on the platform and share the platform, which is a big part of uh, our business model gaining traction with the community. So I'm super, super excited about that. So. Listen, we're all super, super excited about uh, Desdemona Robot. Desdemona Robot featured on the front cover of the New York Times business section uh, right. a few weeks ago on a Saturday. She's a big, big star and um, we're, we're getting huge amounts of interest in booking the Jam Galaxy Band all over the world at the moment and huge amounts of interest in Desdemona as the world's first humanoid robot uh, fronted 
band down galaxy band so it was really great as well uh delivering showcasing frontier tech innovative creative tools it's all amazing in jam galaxy yeah i think i think as we move forward uh, ben's idea of using the jam galaxy band as a way to promote um, awareness and to help teach people about what is possible um, through the tech and the platform and to reach out to artists by showing what is possible as we release these first singles with the robot is a very uh, savvy and uh, interesting way to be to do it. It's a powerful vision and as one uh, executive from a major large tech firm who I spoke to recently about Jam Galaxy said, uh, what Desi does, uh, following the footsteps of her amazing, brilliant sister Sophia, but what Desi does is she 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 helps the world to understand that AI and robotics is about more than just stealing your jobs. <laughs> it's about right. creativity. It's about art. It's about love. It's about interaction. Um, it, it it's really going to help bring humanity along the journey with us to the singularity, and of course by showcasing and developing all of these amazing AI tools, it is going to uh, be a large part of how we're going to encourage adoption and traction on the marketplace uh, because she's right. she's proving right. so popular and very popular with the media at the moment. So top job, Danny. Uh, amazing Thank you, job, Jan Galaxy. Thank you, everybody. And we're all, we're all really looking forward to uh, Rare Bloom, Cardano fan, Cardano community conference event with Big Pay, who's a huge friend of us here at Singularity Net. Cardano community, all huge friends of ours. We'll be there in Denver. Desi will be there. We're going to be playing a concert. Come and see us. Uh, in Oh, I don't know if people can come. But yes, definitely some people <laughs> can come. People who are at right. the conference can come for sure. Right. Uh, right. Thank you so much. And so moving seamlessly from uh, Desi into Desi's sister in the metaverse, uh, Alexei, you're back to talk to us a little bit about Sophia Dow, please. Thank you. Yes, sure. Uh, well, actually, uh, there is uh, a lot of uh, progress and uh, wonderful things uh, going on uh, in uh, Sophia Labs uh, with uh, uh, Sophia Avatar and uh, Sophia Wars, uh, but uh, they deserve uh, uh, their own uh, update, uh, which uh, will hopefully come soon. But uh, I, I can uh, provide an update uh, from uh, our side. Uh, so we are uh, doing uh, basically two things. Uh, one is uh, uh, extending and uh, adapting uh, Mm, Grace uh, dialogue system uh, to Sophia, uh, and uh, another one uh, is uh, uh, R&D towards uh, uh, more AI <laughs> uh, dialogue system. So we basically uh, uh, to put uh, uh, not discover it, uh, but uh, outlined maybe. Uh, three main uh, problems uh, with the uh, current uh, uh, dialogue systems and uh, basically uh, uh, all of them, th these problems like uh, the dialogue systems uh, cannot uh, uh, consistently uh, discuss uh, their own uh, beliefs, opinions, uh, etc. without uh, contradicting uh, themselves and without uh, even noticing uh, they are contradicting. Uh, they are also incapable of uh, uh, getting uh, new knowledge uh, uh, in general, uh, there are of course many attempts uh, uh, to do this uh, in a restricted way, uh, but uh, if uh, uh, you tell such a dialogue system some uh, random stuff, uh, uh, like I, I don't want you uh, ever mentioning that uh, uh, Pluto is uh, not a planet. I still believe it should be a planet. Uh, it will uh, never be able uh, to uh, use uh, this form of knowledge. Uh, mm, uh, so basically uh, all this uh, stuff, uh, it's uh, related to uh, knowledge, uh, to symbolic components. Uh, and uh, we are performing R&D on uh, neural symbolic uh, 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 approaches uh, to combat uh, these uh, problems uh, and uh, we actually have just uh, 
finally started uh, using Hyperon for such uh, knowledge uh, representation and uh, uh, mediating uh, input and output uh, questions uh, together with uh, DNNs. And maybe uh, Sergei Shalapin can uh, say some uh, a few words on uh, DNN part. Thanks. Thanks, Alexei. Yes, thank you, Alexei. We mostly work on uh, the models with memory because it's the first. It was the first possibility to use uh, all the potential capabilities of such models because we have enough data for Sophia. Uh, the data for Sophia was collected for many, many years because it's, it's a well-known story of a, of a robot. And we have enough of data to, well, to try to leverage neural networks to use previous clues in the, in the conversation. So that's the first, uh, the first angle. The next thing uh, we reuse and uh, um, try to achieve even better is the results with open-ended question answering models. And we personali personalize question answering models and uh, reuse the personalized data which was created previously for dialogue terms or dialogue data sets. We reuse this data in the databases which, uh, which is used uh, for a question answering system. Question answering system operates over this database and uh, tries to find, using the retrieval mechanism, trying to find some specific clues and reuses in, uh, in the factorial class answers. But this, if, if this factorial class answers are um, uh, just re regards to Sophia's personality, it works fine. And we, we use all this uh, two, two approaches in neural systems and neural symbolic systems to, to make it much more sentient, as David, David Hansen says. Fabulous update, thank you. Such a huge amount of progress going on and um, Sophia Dow making her uh, more sentient and more AGI-ish. And some really exciting updates coming from Hanson Robotics as well, which they didn't want us to share today because uh, they've got some, some cool stuff to show everybody and uh, they're going to be showing it to everybody soon. Uh, so thanks guys for Sophia Dow. Now, very, very last of the spin-offs that we haven't covered here today would be hypercycle. We don't have Tufi or Dan. Uh, yeah, maybe we could invite Tufi or, or Tufi along to the next recorded pod leaders meeting. I know people would love to hear from him, and he's brilliant and charismatic. And um, Sridhar, um, I'm putting you on the spot here because I didn't ask you this beforehand. But um, do you have anything like synopsis of progress on hypercycle that you'd be able to share with us, please? Yes, I, I don't have much uh, updates on the hypercycle, uh, Janet. Um, so because the, uh, Ben is working uh, with the team, so maybe Sergey might All have right. uh, some updates uh, because uh, uh, some of the the Cardano team from Sergey is uh, is also working and connecting with uh, people in the hypercycle team. Right. Yeah, that's true. We had an amazing amazing meeting with uh, Tufi and Dan. <clears throat> it was only the first uh, starting meeting, as a matter of fact. But uh, we are just getting more and more ready to hypercycle because we are getting deeper and deeper into Cardano and uh, tricky things about Cardano, uh, about the protocols and code and smart contracts uh, capabilities and, and everything. So uh, we are working right now, actually, we are working more on uh, uh, Cardano applications for Gen Galaxy. We're just more focused and concentrated on that because it's a very short term rocket type project but we are getting deeper deeper in cardano and we, we are going to re-implement all this knowledge and practices uh, uh in, in, in active uh, phase of the development of hyper cycle which is upcoming thank you very much indeed sorry for putting you on on the spot we will definitely invite Tufi along Tufi Salada. Uh, of Toda Protocol, who's uh, technically in the lead along with Ben on, on the Hypercycle and of course Dan from, from uh, Toda. Right, we're down to our definitely not, uh, not, not last, not least. I'm going to go to Haley and Peter. Would you like to give us a little update from the powerhouse of Singularity Net, Singularity Net ecosystem marketing and community? Absolutely. Yeah. So um, fortunately, everything that we've got to cover has uh, also been covered by a lot of the ecosystem because we get to just announce all these amazing innovations that are happening all the time throughout the, the ecosystem and the community. So 
Um, of course, AGI 22 was a major initiative for us and, and a major success and, and so much fun. Um, the Jam Galaxy concert, getting to live stream that so that the entire community could enjoy not just the Jam Galaxy, but all of the artists that participated in that, that showcase that was for um, such a good cause as well. And getting to showcase some of our um, Jam Galaxy has been experimenting with the um, uh, virtual technologies that allow a 3D space capture. And so the community got to see just a little bit of that 3D capture within that concert as well. So just a little hint, a little bit of taste of, of what's to come for that. We're excited to gear up for the Jam Galaxy NFT launches as well. It's going to be uh, just amazing. Um, and then we've been working closely with the UX UI team on getting the, the website uh, update completed as well. So we're finalizing some content, some organization and um, telling the, the story of AGI and SingularityNet and the platform. Um, it's this complicated, complex story of emerging technologies as clearly and as simply and as accurately as we can. So it's been a challenge, but an exciting one. We're making some changes within the, the marketing process itself as we are growing as an ecosystem with the spin-offs and with singularity net how can we make sure that we're focused on singularity net's marketing needs and growth needs and and communication needs as well as supporting the spin-off as, as they're growing and having amazing updates as well um and so we're developing some guidelines and some new processes that we're excited to share with the spinoffs, but also to share with our deep funding candidates as well. So that'll be a, a good tool for them to grow as they grow on the platform too. And then finally, getting ready for the Rare Bloom event, which is coming up in October. And I hope that uh, a lot of our community can come join Cardano, Rare Bloom, Big Pay, Rare. Um, in, in this amazing event. So uh, I'll pass off to Peter to talk a little bit about the community initiatives. Thanks a lot, Ellie. Um, yeah, the ambassador program is uh, going strong. There's about 25 to 30 community members actively contributing, participating in meetings and work groups, uh, translating blog posts and the like. Um, if you're inclined to join, uh, do check our Discord server for that. Um, our tunnels are at Tuesdays, 18 UTC. We've got a couple of other meetings you can find the schedule over on Discord. I uh, would like to throw a quick shout out to uh, Julian, who has released the first two um, interviews he did for the um, for the community podcast work group. So that's that's amazing. Uh, and in light of time, I'll, I'll yeah I'll wrap up. Uh, just a quick shout out for um, Catalyst Swarm because they've got a proposal running right now in Fund Nine of Catalyst, um, and that's all about um, collaboration between uh, Catalyst Swarm and Singularity Net. Um, basically, if you search ID skill for singularity, that, uh, it'll pop up. So um, please consider throwing that a vote. Thank you so much. Vote for us, please, uh, in, in Catalyst. Now, uh, we mentioned community in the summer, and I'd like to say a very big thanks to all of the community for attending and commenting on the financial report AMA. Because of course that was another highlight of the summer, uh, possibly a less glamorous highlight than uh, meta programming language AI DSL, uh, solving longevity, uh, releasing new uh, websites, etc., and and new AI agents. But nonetheless, important we did of course uh, publish our 2021 financial report in the summer. And a very big thank you to all of you in the community who came along and engaged in the AMA there uh, and the team who helped with it. Right, we've got two more. We're going to really speed up. Uh, I'm going to finish with you, Jan, because you're our host. But uh, Edwin, you have been working extremely hard over the summer on partnerships. You're on fire. Tell us what's going on. Hello to our fantastic community and what a fantastic quarter we've had. I'm so proud of the partners that we've brought on and the partners that we continue to work with. Uh, for our new partners, we are starting workshops to begin various tasks as agreed. Uh, there's quite a broad scope of usage from our AI capabilities and the team is you know, extremely excited uh, about the journey ahead with each of these relationships that we've formed. Uh, our latest announcement is with Hedge Technologies an integrated reg tech solution provider 
Uh, our partnership sets out to meet FinCrime, AML, KYC and regulatory requirements. Uh, this partnership will oversee the development, coordination and implementation of AI-driven FinCrime solutions, uh, whilst also helping the hedge team scale their AI models too. Uh, the underlying AI solution will be developed in-house by ourselves here at SNET um, and will also be deployed on the Singularity Net platform and marketplace. Uh, the partnership will offer support to other ecosystem spin-offs, uh, including Rejuve, NewNet, uh, SingDAO, and more to come uh, down the line. Um, Head James to lead in the world of AI for fin crime detection uh, and prevention, and it's with great pleasure to be helping them um, with their goal. Prior to that, we were probing the secrets of human uh, longevity with Methuselah flies. Um, Singularity Net and Rejuve have launched a partnership with Genesient uh, to apply advanced machine learning and machine uh, reasoning methods to transfer insights gained from the Methuselah fly genome to the human genome. Uh, the goal is to acquire new information regarding gene therapies, uh, drugs, um, all you know, out to prolong uh, prolonging human uh, healthy life. Singularity's genetic fly project um, falls within the company's philosophy of AI projects for social good. Now, although um, longevity research will likely take several years to bear fruit, it's already shown some fantastic results. Um, so SNET's many projects in healthcare is, is, is out there to unlock a more um, democratic, decentralized and transparent use of, of bio data. So, you know, do keep check on this one. It's, it's absolutely a fascinating project. Um, so Singularity Net also joined forces with Mandela to build AI power metaverse um, focused on mythology and enlightenment. Uh, Mandela is developing a massively multiplayer online role playing game uh, that runs across multiple platforms and blockchains. And this extends to a geolocational AR based uh, application and the forthcoming TV, TV series. Uh, I've got no doubt this is going to be huge. And this is all based on new consciousness uh, orientated mythology introduced in the in the Mandela graphic novel. So if you haven't already, please check out our Medium article on this uh, super interesting one. Uh, I'm so, so excited uh, to see where this leads. Now, at the start of the quarter, we joined hands to unlock um, advanced AI solutions for AML compliance with the Saudi based firm Mosin. So Mosin offers uh, the leading AML and compliance suite in MENA uh, that empowers financial institutions in fighting financial crime. Uh, this partnership um, is a massive step forward to bringing the best expertise in AI and AML. Um, Mosin, fantastic team. They're always striving for innovation and we're very glad to, to help them on their journey. Now, before Q3 come, even comes to an end, we've got three huge projects we're, we're about to announce. So, you know, please do keep your eyes peeled uh, over the next two weeks for these. Uh, they're not to be missed. So around the corner, we have Q4. We've got even more in store for you. Some absolutely mind blown projects, uh, a real good mix of creative and technical. Uh, I look forward to you all joining us on this journey. Uh, it truly is one of the most exciting projects on the planet. Uh, thank you. Right. Uh, last but always never least our very own favorite oozing goodness and integrity our uh, vp of product deep funding lead jan horlings tell us uh, how everything is going with deep funding well janet my head is spinning right now with all the news i'm absorbing so it's hard to gather my thoughts about deep funding and and tell a coherent story here but i'll give it a try um, actually, I'm also very excited by something that I thought was the most exciting things, but after all of this, it's hard to keep that uh, as a valid thing, but it's still, uh, uh, I would say, at least very interesting. Um, we're conducting an experiment with deep funding, and it's a voting uh, experiment, um, uh, a, a, go a governance uh, voting experiment. Um, so. Deep funding is very important to Singularity Net uh, because it will help seed the platform with a lot of uh, interesting services. And we are working hard on that with the teams that are already uh, passed in, in round one. We are looking ahead for uh, round two. But another reason why it's very important is because um, deep funding treasury is a large part of the tokens of uh, Singularity Net. 
And as you all know, with that great power comes great responsibility. And that responsibility is yours. We want to give it to you, our community. Um, and that means that governance of deep funding is extremely important and also maybe a little bit at the forefront of governance and uh, decentralization of the rest of the Singularity Net uh, Foundation. So what we are aiming to do is to do an experiment in community governance, meaning that we want to give you the opportunity to give us proposals on what we should change in round two of deep funding. And it can be about anything, about the awards, about the timelines, about um, the things, the, the requirements for proposals or proposers, um, whatever you think makes sense, but it has to be restricted to round two. Now, the reason why we are doing this now uh, has to do with some new functionality in the portal of our partner Sway, uh, because they will enable us to have a Web3 login, meaning you can log in with your wallet. And because you can log in with your wallet now, we can um, potentially um, connect voting behavior with behavior on the portal. And what we are aiming to do is to see uh, which profiles on our portal uh, are most constructive and, and most helping. And what we want to do uh, with that is, is make a kind of a reputation score. So voting and reputation. So this is really an experiment in reputation rating. And we will use that rating for two things. Uh, one is that we will see if we can use it to influence the voting by giving added weights to people who contributed a lot during uh, this program. And the other thing is that we want to give away 100,000 AGIX to people who most contributed to uh, this governance uh, experiment. Um, now, I'm very excited, but at the same time, it will not be perfect yet. A lot of things have to be done manual. Um, we have to find out what works and what doesn't work, hence an experiment. But looking very much forward to all your input on what you think should be improved in uh, deep funding. So we'll bring out all the details of this thing uh, very shortly. Um, and then we'll let you know how you can uh, create proposals for governance, governance proposals, or how you can react and, and give other kinds of uh, useful contributions. So. Um, if you want to be part of all this, go to Discord, to Telegram, uh, be part of the community. We're already discussing this with some uh, community members and hope to release this uh, new experiment very, very soon. I'll be seeing you there. That's fantastic, Jan. Your passion for decentralization, your passion for the community and your passion for deep funding is, is just on paralleled uh, apart from the passion that everybody else here has for all of their projects and our amazing project but to quote uh, paddy mcginnis anybody from the uk who knows paddy mcginnis community the power is in your hands uh, so come along vote get involved engage and take it forward with the arm thank you so folks i'm gonna have to call it a wrap i truly hope that everyone out there watching this video firstly thank you for watching it thank you for your time thank you for your support of this project and i really hope you're getting the same sense that that we have here at singularity net of being the most vibrant the most thriving the most passionate the most committed uh the the most frontier tech uh, organization and group of people on the planet and we're making huge strides progress in our technologies in our in our strategic vertical markets across all of our projects i do believe we are absolutely unparalleled uh, we couldn't do a thing without you in the community so thank you so much for your support we're here to serve you we're here to support this great mission we're here to uh, bring about a benevolent, bene beneficial singularity together with you. And do you know what? I think we're gonna do it. Bye, see you in October.